the right of privacy was important to our ancestors. And it's in the Fourth Amendment, and it's important to Americans today. We're a little unique on this right of privacy. It's, it's really not one of the things that a lot of other countries have. And remember, it's not supposed to be violated by government, our right to be secure in our homes and our effects. So here we are, 2015. And where are we? Well, this morning, somewhere in the United States, somebody woke up, sent out some emails, made a phone call. A person may have had a meeting, so they get their little iPhone out, I five six or whatever it is, five six, and pull up Google Maps to figure out a route to get from where they are to over where the meeting is. Um, they took their vehicle or maybe jumped in a cab, checked Facebook if they're in a cab on the phone, texted his, text his friend, and maybe even played what is now something fun, I guess, for some people, a candy crush on the iPhone. Uh, after the meeting's over with, this individual may head off to the office, log on to the computer, do a little G-chatting with a friend about where he planned to go for dinner that evening, and later that evening he uploads a photograph from supper, as we call it in Texas, on his Instagram. That's maybe a typical day for a lot of people. But all during that route of citizen, American citizen, the federal government has the ability to stalk that individual every step of the way because of the devices that he is using electronically. Uh, maybe until last year, until some news came out by the, the national media, most Americans were unaware that their every move could be tracked by Big Brother. And through the NSA, which I call the National Spy Agency now, government has the ability ability to read citizens' emails, read their texts, know their phone logs, track the location and travel and movements of citizens, snoop and collect information about individuals through smartphones, apps, read G chats and look at private photographs, all unknown to the citizen. The failure to disclose any of this information until recently is why many Americans now fear government intrusion, and I call it government stalking, into our lives. The stalking government has kept uh, its peeping Tom activities a big secret until primarily Philip Snowden told us all about it. His issue is a different issue, but now we know about it. Um, so how did we get here? This technology has rapidly changed and given power uh, hungry, in my opinion, bureaucrats, the capability to sift through data and find out more information than ever. And just because they have the physical ability doesn't mean that they have the constitutional right or any right to violate the Fourth Amendment, because this protects Americans. The Fourth Amendment doesn't protect government. It protects Americans. It protects citizens. The, the government seems to justify the snooping, the peeping Tom, uh, for a couple of reasons. They, the White House, the administration, claims that NSA has no interest in monitoring American citizens. They're just looking for bad guys. Well, I have a hard time believing that. Uh, until evidence came out to the contrary, uh, the NSA, it seems, was uh, uh, snooping and spying uh, on uh, lots of Americans in, in the name of trying to catch the bad guys. Uh, Furthermore, NSA, when they did a little investigation, they found out that uh, dozens of instances where their own employees misused intelligence capabilities to spy on people, ex-girlfriends, and others. Why? Simply because they had the ability. So we have learned for years that the NSA has quietly, in my opinion, snooped and spy spied on millions of Americans without a warrant, and that is the key, and without their knowledge and without their consent. This is justified for a second reason, based upon the name of national security. It's said we live in terrible times. We do. We've got these terrorists running all over the world, bad guys trying to hurt us. So we at the NSA need to get this information to protect Americans from these bad guys. Well, let's analyze that just for a moment. Um, 
We've heard reports that, well, we've caught a lot of bad guys because of this information that NSA has seized, this mega data. So during a Judiciary Committee hearing last year, I asked Deputy Attorney General James Cole this question. How many criminal cases have been filed based upon this massive seizure of information by NSA, collecting information on Americans without the use of a warrant and storing it? And to my knowledge, it still exists. How many criminal cases? And he testified, maybe one. Maybe one. So this nonsense about we're doing all of this because we have to catch the bad guys, they've got one criminal case that they can talk about. Even if there were more, it does not justify, in my opinion, the massive, the massive seizure of data without constitutional safeguards. Let's read it one more time. The right of the people to be secure in their persons and houses and papers and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue, in this case no warrants at all are issuing, but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. That's not what's occurring. It's just massive amounts of information are being seized. Uh, let me... Let me try to describe it this way. Let's go back to Bobby Oglethorpe. Let's say that Bobby Oglethorpe lives close to where I do in Atascocita, Atascocita, Texas. And the police say to me as a judge and say, Judge, uh, we know that Bobby Oglethorpe lives in this zip code here, but we don't know where he lives. And he's no good. He's a criminal. And he's in possession of firearms and drugs and all kinds of illegal things he's done. But we don't know which house he's in in this particular zip code. So we want to go search all the houses in the zip code. And hopefully we'll catch him. No judge in this country would sign a warrant saying, all right, have at it. Start searching all the houses looking for this one guy with all this bad illegal stuff that he's in possession of. No judge would do that. Why? Because it violates the Fourth Amendment. Why? Because it's not specific enough. It's a general warrant, like the British were imposing on the colonies, that they, as John Adams said, spark of the Constitution or the American Revolution, wouldn't wouldn't do that. Or it's an example, another example, like, you know, it's finding a needle in a haystack. The government wants to seize the whole haystack. They can't do that. They got to find the needle. They got to be specific in their warrant. So, in my opinion, based upon the Fourth Amendment. The activity of the NSA by seizing lots of data violates the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution. There are other examples. So we talk about NSA seizure of data, and to my knowledge, like I said, they still store all this information. And may I inquire of the, of the speaker how much time I have left? The gentleman has 12 minutes remaining. Thank you. I appreciate it. NSA. Let's move on to what is called EFCA. Uh, and we'll talk about the IRS a little bit. You know, this spring, most Americans are going to be filing taxes, their tax returns. And uh, many Americans, including me, are concerned about the IRS ability to take information from Americans without consent or without a warrant. And sometimes that includes emails. So let's talk specifically about the concept of government seizure of emails without consent of the person who sent it or received it, and without a warrant. Current federal law is that if somebody has an email within six months of when that email was sent, that email to, to be obtained by government, not just law enforcement, but any government agency, they have to get a warrant to seize that. But as soon as that 160 days runs, past 160 days, government doesn't get a warrant because the law doesn't require it. I think in the spirit of the Fourth Amendment, the Fourth Amendment should require that. Email. What is email? That is an electronic message sent to another person. Let's go back to regular mail.